Good morning, everyone. This is Dana from NextGen. And today I am going to show you Angela's January expenses, and they're based on her 2022 budget. So for those of you who have not seen her budget, uh, I'll go ahead and link that up at the top. But the reason why we're doing this on Mindful Wednesday is because it's important to do your expenses mindfully. You're going to be proactive as opposed to reactive. So I'll probably re probably repeat that um, when I'm going through her expenses. So let me go ahead and switch over to her budget. This is Angela's personal monthly budget. So what we have here is we have her net income. And so what her net income is her annual income divided by 12. Now she gets paid every other week, which is 26 pay periods. So one month she may be getting paid twice. Um, and then there's a couple of months where she gets paid three times. But for the sake of simplicity, we're um, dividing it by 12. So it'll make sense to you when we start filling this in. So what I'll do is I'll go down the line and put in what her net income was for the month of January. Now, I will tell you that what she does is everything that is paid by um, check or doesn't allow for a credit card, she um, go, she went goes ahead and pays that. But everything that it, she usually pays by a credit card, and I'll tell you which one that is, she actually puts it in her money market account. So from her pay, she um, makes the payments that she would make for that paycheck. And then she puts everything in her money market account. And then when her credit card bill comes, that's what she's using to pay um, her bill and she's going to move it from her money market to her checking and then make the credit card payment and it'll make sense to you when we go through this all right so the um, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do the net income so the net income for the month of January is five thousand four hundred and ninety two dollars and some cents so I'll go ahead and just round that up okay so that is her monthly income. Those are her two paychecks. Now, what I didn't include was the extra income, which is which would be her the interest on her certificates of deposit and money market. So the money that goes in there, they're actually um, paying her interest. So um, the interest from her money market and her certificates of deposits is $350. Now, this is not included. She's not spending any of this money because with the exception of the money market, anything that's in the certificate of deposit is rolled back up into the certificate of, certificate of deposit. And the reason being is because when they pay out the interest the following month, it's for a higher amount, which is compound interest. And if you don't know about that, I'll put that either up at the top or in the description below to explain how compound interest works. So we will go to her mortgage and her mortgage is the same for January. She was, um, they let her know that that would be the amount, the new mortgage amount. And again, the only reason it's adjusted is because her escrow would be adjusted and their escrow is comprised of her taxes and insurance and both of those actually went up so her principal and interest stayed the same it was her taxes and insurance that went up and that's why her mortgage was adjusted accordingly and in the um, cable and wi-fi she pays that using her credit card and for some reason they had an outage, so she was not charged the normal $215,000. She was actually paid 100, and, uh, she actually paid $175. Now, what I will tell you is for the, for the expenses that stay the same, that's automatic. But for the ones that she, that is more um, variable, 
or is adjustable, she's very conscious about that. So she's mindful of the money she spends. So she is um, proactive instead of reactive. So any places that she can make changes, she'll make it, all right? Now her um, electric and gas, which is a combined bill, that actually went up to $223, okay? Um, and as you can see, the budget amount was 175, but this month it was 223. So now you see that the difference is a negative 48. Okay, so that's just letting her know that she is over her budget. And that happens at times. And you make adjustments if you need to, all right? So we had a really big snow and she had someone shovel her snow. So she paid them $55. So that's why you have, we're gonna put that there, all right? And of course, for her homeowners association, that amount is the same for this year. And so you can see that for her housing, the projected was $293. Her actual was 2041. And even though her electric and gas went up $48, she has a difference of, of a positive 52. And of course, these are um she could have shoveled her own snow which she chose not to because it was pretty high but just to know that these are the that's one area that could have gone down or been zero but she um had the money and she was able to spend it um the the wi-fi this um adjustment usually doesn't happen but i guess they felt because it was an inconvenience that they would pass the adjustment on to the consumer all right, let's move down to transportation. So in transportation, her car note is the same. No adjustment there. Okay. Her fuel, instead of paying $75, she didn't do a whole lot of traveling, so it's 33 here. Okay, as you can see, she has a surplus of $42. Now we do have an other in here, $25. And what it is is she has a, an easy pass. And if it goes below a certain amount, it replenishes $25. So she had actually traveled um, about a year or so before and it actually showed up on it finally found its way through and showed up when she did a toll, when she drove through a toll. So it made it go below $10. So when it went below $10, it actually replenished the easy pass to, um, by $25. So this is not something that she normally would um, be using, but right here you see um, that's why it's a negative 25 because that's not, um, that's not in any of the categories that we have here. She didn't have any insurance or any licensing or any maintenance in January. So her the difference is a positive $187. All right. Now for her life insurance, she decided to go ahead. Now she receives an annual bill and because it's an annual bill, she receives a discount. So she decided to go ahead and pay the full amount which means that this is the amount for the rest of the year. She paid the $507. So February on, this will be zeroed out because she paid it in full. And that's why you have a negative $465. Now let's move down to the groceries. The groceries were a little high this month and it is $675. She did not do any dining out. So she did not eat outside the home this month. So we're looking at a negative 100 for the food. She didn't have any pets, of course. So for her 
personal care. She didn't have any medical. She didn't do any dry cleaning. However, she did get her hair done this month. She doesn't have it budgeted in. So let me go ahead. She spent $65. And that's why you see the negative 65 here. Now, in subsequent months, she may do some moving around as far as projected costs, but she's still positive $60. So let's go back up to the top. She did not, uh, let's see, she did not spend any money on entertainment this month. She did make a payment on her student loan. So go ahead and put that in there. She did, um, I think she did do a charity and she paid $25. Now, some months it's a little bit higher. So this is just the average of what she's been spending. So if you take this amount and you multiply it times 12, that's 6,000. That's how much you would normally pay um, through the year. So this month was a little low. Um, so that's why you have the plus of 1475. So in her savings, go back up. Sorry, let me... go down. So what we normally do is, like I said, everything was in the money market and then she moves it over when she's making the payment. So the difference is 16.51. So in her savings, in her money market savings, we have 16.51. It might be 1652, but as you can see, this is a little bit more than she would normally um, have in her savings, which is actually, in this case, a good thing. But it's just letting her know that this is more than she would normally be putting into her savings account. So basically zeroed out. So her actual expenses right here from her projected. So this is what um, doing a budget looks like when you actually have expenses that you can plug in. You'll see that there's some areas that are higher and then some areas that are on point that match your budget. And then there's some where, let's see, there's some that you actually do less than. And then you have areas where you did not have it budgeted for. And that's why you see from the zero budget to what you actually spent. And then you see something here. And again, this is to allow her to evaluate whether she start, wants to um, change the projected for her personal care to move some of that money around because we're looking at it by category. So she still has a surplus of $60. Doing her budget is only part of assessing her financial wellness. So next week, we're gonna actually calculate Angela's net worth.